Good day, my name is Sharina, editor for Medical Channel Asia, and today we will be joined by Dr. Sean Leo, who specializes in orthopedic, sports injury, orthopedic surgery, and lower limb surgery. Dr. Sean, the SEA Games just happened and we've seen some injuries, but today we want to focus on knee injuries. Uh, let me start by asking, how can athletes' performance be affected after an injury? Hi, Sharina, and uh, hi to everybody who's joining us and watching. Um, I, first of all, I like to say that thank you for having me here. Um, as to your questions and on how um, athletes' performance uh, can be affected by injuries, um, I think it's a pretty uh, a common question that, that uh, a lot of people who are participating in sports are uh, always asked. I think that um, uh, having an injury to any athlete is a very major thing and it not only affects uh, a person physically, it also sometimes affects them psychologically uh, because of um, the, the uh, worry and the fear of uh, having to aggravate that injury or sometimes uh, to have a similar injury that can recur. Um, for the physical part, it is uh, quite common that some people who have got injuries uh, sustain uh, a small uh, or, a, or a low um, um, severity injury but because they have to keep training and they have to keep um, uh, putting exertion and force on the limb or on the joint that uh, they are they have injured it ends up um, getting worse over time and if they do not have time to recover or get it treated or rest then of course physically they will not be able to perform uh, at the peak of their ability and in that sense um, if this is a competitive sport that the athlete is uh, um, uh, involved in then certainly uh, there will be a, a negative impact on the performance. Mm, I understand Dr. Sean and what is the typical treatment for knee injuries? The knee joint uh, has made up of uh, several different components, uh, like very simply, uh, it's got a bone component, it's got the uh, soft tissue, uh, which is made up of ligaments, tendons, um, it's made up of uh, cartilage uh, on the surfaces of the uh, uh, articulating um, areas, which means that when the bone slides against each other, uh, that's covered with cartilage. And in between uh, the bone, you also have a specialized uh, um, meniscus which help in shock absorption as well as uh, in the ability for the uh, uh, knee to uh, meet each other with the greatest uh, uh, surface area and decrease the pressure. So any one of these um, um, uh, structures can be injured. It can also be injured uh, together meaning that it's not like you can you only need to injure one of them sometimes for bad injuries uh, one or two of them can be injured together or sometimes uh, all of them can be injured together. So it really depends on what kind of um, uh, injury you sustain to each of these components and whether or not it occurs as a whole. Um, to, to put it simply, if it is a mild injury from um, strains, from overuse, uh, then with adequate rest and with uh, a little bit of uh, calibration of the way that uh, training is done uh, or uh, how to exert your, your uh, knee when you're playing a game uh, is probably more than sufficient uh, to allow the athlete to continue in uh, what they are doing. But if there is a structural problem with any of these uh, components, then the situation becomes a little bit more difficult, uh, especially if the athlete wants to continue training or it is in the competition uh, period where uh, they've got games lined up, um, then it becomes difficult to, to uh, be able to um, recover in time uh, to be uh, to be on your full performance um, when you are participating in a competition. Thank you, Dr. Sean. And you touched based on the recovery during the games that are lined up. One of the things that I'm wondering mm -hmm. about is that, is it possible that after a knee injury, the athlete can still recover at 100%? Yeah, so um, I think the most important thing is actually injury prevention. Yeah, if you are able to prevent yourself from getting injured, then uh, that would be the best because um, uh, once you get injured, then it's sometimes a random throw of the dice of, as to what injury you sustain and how um, that injury will be will be affecting your performance. Um, to be able to recover 
if you are given um, enough time to rest and do rehabilitation, uh, most times um, the knee is able to recover uh, a good proportion of its uh, actual function. Uh, but to recover 100%, it will once again depend on what kind of injury uh, is sustained. Now, if it is a um, low-grade injury like uh, overuse uh, injury or maybe sometimes even um, uh, superficial cuts uh, or uh, a bruise, then of course these injuries, uh, you can con completely recover from them and your knee will be as good as new. But if you have a structural problem within your knee itself, um, you might not be able to recover 100% uh, without some form of aid or some form of help uh, such as surgical intervention. And even with surgical intervention, there are certain um, um, conditions like uh, maybe a meniscus tear or a, or a ligament tear uh, whereby you might not be able to reach 100% of what it is um, when compared to your uninjured knee. Uh, a lot of athletes though uh, do adapt from uh, such uh, injuries by uh, altering their training, altering the way that uh, they do a particular sport or the way that they do a particular activity and they seem to be able to cope uh, pretty well uh, despite having the injury. Of the things that I also wanted to ask is that mm -hmm. is the recovery time from a knee injury different from an athlete and a normal person who doesn't do sports? Physiologically, I think there are certain things that uh, affect recovery times. Uh, one of them uh, would be age. Yeah, the older athletes um, uh, tend to uh, take a longer time for them to recover uh, compared to someone who is uh, much younger. And of course, uh, uh, their recovery time is also um, affected by what uh, structures are injured. If you've got a simple single uh, injury, uh, it's probably easier to treat that particular injury and uh, have the patient recover as compared to another injury whereby there are two or three um, structures within your knee which is uh, injured. Um, so a lot of it has to depend um, on a proper assessment and thereafter uh, the uh, early institution of uh, treatment uh, as well as the adequate uh, rest uh, that uh, rest and rehabilitation that has to accompany uh, treatment of such um, um, injuries. So uh, yeah, for athletes who are in the middle of a competition, uh, sometimes uh, sustaining an injury uh, is a very um, uh, catastrophic event because what happens is they will not be able to participate uh, to the maximum of the performance. And these are especially for um, sports which involve contact, uh, such as uh, soccer and perhaps uh, even things like boxing. Next is, are there any specific rehabilitation protocols or exercises tailored for athletes with knee injuries? For knee injuries, it has to depend on what structures are injured uh, because the protocols tend to um, be specific for specific areas that are injured. Um, and it also depends on whether or not the injuries are uh, mild or severe. Uh, and these protocols will then change with time. Uh, or sorry, will then change with the situation. Yeah, but uh, in general, um, there are a couple of stages in which uh, a rehabilitation uh, goes through. Um, the first is uh, to decrease the pain, the swelling of the joint, uh, and to try to restore range of motion as much as possible. So that's usually the first step of any rehabilitation. Uh, and that can be done by either um, things like resting, not exerting the, the injured area too much, uh, having some medications uh, that can decrease swelling, um, help improve um, the pain situation, uh, and uh, sometimes even stretching, application of uh, eyes, or application of compression to the area which is injured. Um, so once that is done, then the next stage of the rehabilitation becomes um, something that uh, will require a little bit more um, exercise and strengthening of the muscles uh, that surround this knee joint to see whether or not functionally the, the athlete is able to get back to what they originally uh, are able to do. Now, some people, uh, because of the pain and because of the disuse, they have got a bit of um, um, a bit of disuse uh, uh, atrophy of the muscles, and that requires um, exercise to be able to. Um, improve the muscle condition. Uh, these are this exercise is a bit different from um, 
playing the game itself, uh, it is more focused on just strengthening the muscles that surround the joint so that the joint has got um, its ability to support itself as well as to control the different planes of motion. And then after that, it comes the final um, portion of rehabilitation, which is for the uh, athlete to be able to functionally do what they're supposed to do in that particular uh, sport that they are taking part in. And this is different for different sports. Um, some sports require a lot of pivoting. Some sports require um, rapid start and stop. Uh, some sports uh, um, would actually be uh, necessary for the, the athlete to be able to endure very, very long distance or long timings of exertion. Uh, so it's different for different sports. And that's why um, each uh, rehabilitation protocol is very specifically tailored for the kind of injury that the athlete sustains as well as for the uh, actual sports that he's taking part in. And finally, I wanted to ask, are there any advancements or innovations in knee injury treatment specifically aimed at athletes? Well, it's actually not just uh, aimed at athletes, but um, usually it is uh, the athletes that, that may benefit most uh, out of this um, because of their high demands and their, their high requirements for function. Uh, but generally, most of the treatments uh, that can be instituted for um, knee injuries can be applicable uh, to people who are um, athletes and people who may not be so active. Uh, uh, it is still the same structures that are injured and um, the treatment would probably work just as well. Uh, now, some of these uh, recent treatments are basically uh, aiming to um, repair or restore uh, what was injured uh, rather than replace or reconstruct. Uh, so the difference is to try to uh, maintain what the body originally has um, and try to allow it to heal on its own rather than to replace it with uh, another structure. Uh, an example of this will be the anterior cruciate ligament. I think um, that's one of the um, ligaments in the knee that is often injured. Uh, but there are new evidence that comes about to show that certain patterns of ACL injury uh, are amenable to um, repair. So that means that instead of um, taking down the torn ligament and replacing it with a graft, which is a replacement ligament. Um, uh, that's the traditional way that an ACL tear is uh, uh, treated, a uh, reconstruction of the ACL. Um, recent studies have shown that uh, repairing the ACL can also um, give a good uh, outcome in terms of uh, restoring stability to the knee. And uh, it is also a faster recovery. Uh, and um, if the athlete were to re-injure the knee again or the ACL again, uh, a reconstruction at that stage would probably um, be easier than to reconstruct a uh, already reconstructed knee. Meaning you have you put in a, a graft in the first place and then you have to do a revision reconstruction. So that would be a bigger surgery. Yeah, but of course these are early um, um, techniques and some time needs to be uh, given to analyze the results to see whether or not these work, but they are very, very interesting fields of research and um, there are people overseas who have got undergone uh, such treatments with pretty good results. My key takeaway here is um, injury prevention is always best. It's always um, the top priority, whether in sports or in our day-to-day -day activities. And the treatments and the rehabilitation options actually depend on the severity of the injury and even the type of sports that's being played. Absolutely. So thank you very much for your time, Dr. Sean. This has been lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for having me.